Many of you have asked about the origins of the Golden Age of Radio, which was first broadcast on WTIC, Hartford, Connecticut, some 35 years ago, in 1970. Its roots actually go back about five years before that, when I first met Ed Corcoran, who was a collector of old-time radio shows. And a lot of time has passed since we did the show, and a lot has happened. I left WTIC to join the Voice of America in 1977, and today we live in Washington while Ed and his family are still in Connecticut. As to how Ed and I got together in the first place, I couldn't remember, so I called him recently, hoping that he could fill in the blanks. How are you, Ed? I'm just fine. It's great to hear your voice again. Well, like, likewise. It's I, always a pleasure to I, talk with uh, my old radio partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do go back. We go back 40 years, back to 1965. Oh, it can't be that long. Really? Well, 1965. It, it really does go back that far. But I'm trying to figure out, Ed, how we got together in the first place. Do you remember? Yeah, so you were doing a show on TV, General Interest. I called in and said, uh, I like what you're doing, and could I get some more information? And I guess from there we got started, and uh, I came in and we talked. And I guess uh, from that came the... Uh, a lifelong friendship, shall we say. <laughs> at least one for 40 years. But uh, did you do a television show with me at first? Yeah, I think we did. Uh, that was my first encounter. Uh, you had, a, uh, I guess, a, some kind of collection or something like that. And uh, I, I don't remember the details, but we did uh, do it live in the, in the studio. And this was about old-time radio? No, oh, it was, uh, I don't, I think it was on some other subject, and we get into that, and that, that, that was kind of, uh, the start of it, but it wasn't, it wasn't what we were doing at the time, it was something different. But then I found out about your radio collection, and, uh, I became intrigued, because I too was interested in this so-called old-time radio, but I didn't have any recordings, and you did. How did you manage to acquire these recordings, at least at first? Well, I always had, uh, tape recorders, and, uh, I guess I realized, uh, you know, that radio was kind of dying out. TV was uh, taking more and more time uh, from dramatic shows. And also, I found a lot of other people in the country, not a lot, but half a dozen anyway, who uh, shared my interest in it. So we exchanged uh, tapes and et cetera and kind of built up our own collections. So I had some California tapes and some Chicago tapes and, of course, local ones. Well, my recollection is that when you first came into the radio studio back in Hartford, you had a 16-inch transcription with you of the uh, Jack Armstrong program. Now, how would you have acquired something like that? That was right out of a radio station. Well, uh, a friend of mine, I guess, in New Britain, he was uh, in uh, radio in, in the armed forces. He told me he had all these transcriptions that he kept, and uh, he didn't know what to do with them, so he thought he'd give them to me. So, uh... They came from the uh, AFRS, Armed Forces Radio Service, and I guess they were the uh, you know the backbone of a lot of the programs they did uh, to fill in, along with uh, you know Army, Navy news and so forth. They actually made a very good source, didn't they, for for radio collectors because they did have these sixteen inch transcriptions, and that provided the uh, the recording that 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 you needed in order to preserve these shows. Yeah, I have about uh, forty of them down in the basement. Uh, right now, I can copy all those onto tape or whatever media is available. We did a, a number of uh, irregular shows, if you will. You appeared on a program I did called Americana, and then when I did the afternoon music show, you were a, a guest. I think we, we put you on five times a week or something like that. Oh. We also celebrated the uh, radio station's anniversary of, uh, from time to time with uh, excerpts from your collection. Do you remember? Oh, yes. I guess I, you know, I was kind of a, a, a recurring guest on your show, uh, and uh, each time we we kept getting more uh, deeply involved in uh, you know the, the fact the radio was it's kind of losing its uh, impact, and we have you know, we have the, some of the great shows that when radio was king and how great it really was. It really was. Well, then in 1970. One of us came up with the idea of actually interviewing the people who did those broadcasts. I don't know if that was your idea or my idea. Do you oh, remember? I'm sure it was a joint, uh, joint effort, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, we decided to try to make it happen. And 
we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were fortunate, Ed, in that a lot of the people who had been in radio had either found new jobs in Connecticut or retired to Connecticut. So we started out with some of the writers and producers of programs, but then we decided to, to branch out and, uh, and get some of the stars. Do you uh, recall how that happened, how we made those contacts? How did we begin to reach out to the John Gibsons and, and, and people of that caliber? Well, through uh, you know, various contacts, we, uh, we found these people lived uh, generally in the area. And the thing is that they all loved it. You know, radio to them was, uh, was a, a great, great part of their life. And uh, when we talked about, the, you know, talking about their career and that, that medium, they really get all excited, you know. We had a lot of cooperation from the people who were, who were in radio at that time. They just loved to, uh, to do it and talk about it. And I think it's because nobody was asking them about it at that no, time. No, that's right. Just you and I. <laughs> <laughs> since then, since then, of course, it has become a, a hobby with, with, you know, hundreds and thousands of people across the country. But at that time, nobody was, was talking very much about it. So we had sort of a... Uh, uh, a first-hand opportunity to bring these people along. And I remember some of the stars that we we did interview, including uh, Don Amici. Do you remember that? Oh, of course. You know, he was uh, an icon, no, no question, in radio and in movies and uh, elsewhere as well, you know. And do you remember how cooperative people of his stature were? It was amazing. Yeah, and uh, I don't recall anybody turning us down. You know, when you mention radio, they all got all hepped up about it. You yeah, know, they see, should. That, that, that's great. You know, I'd love to do it kind of thing. Absolutely. Do you, uh, d do you have any favorites of all the people that we interviewed? And I don't expect you to rattle them off, but I mean, <laughs> does, any, <laughs> does any one or two come to mind uh, as, as being outstanding? Well, I enjoy all of them, really, but uh, I guess Jackie Kilk, I, I, he, uh, he played Homer, I guess, on the Henry Aldrich program. And, uh, we, you know, we had quite a, a nice conversation going with him. No, I don't have these names in front of me. If I had a few uh, names, I could uh, I could re probably recall how we met them and how we got them onto the show. Oh, absolutely. How about Rosa Rio? We went right down to her home and recorded her in front of the uh, the organ that she had in the living room. <laughs> That's right. We, we, they did. Uh, TIC was very uh, generous in allowing us to go out uh, with an engineer and uh, do these things on location, you might say. They didn't all come to the studio. We went out and visited them at their home or wherever, their place of business. So the, the, the uh, station was very cooperative in, uh, in uh, financing those, uh, those trucks for us. Because Absolutely. You needed an engineer to go along and so forth. You know, it wasn't just... Uh, it was done no professionally, is what I'm trying to say. I remember we interviewed Leon Janney in, uh, I think it was Fort Lee, New Jersey. That was, a, that was a, a goodly distance from Hartford. And we got to New York on several occasions. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, and again, if I had a list, I could probably tell you which, which ones uh, particularly we did that with. But uh, you know, how many guests do we have all together? You recall that figure, don't you? Well, I think we had over 80. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't recall them, huh? <laughs> Well, it was a wonderful run, and we did it for uh, seven years, from 1970 until 1977. And uh, there's a part of me that wishes we were still able to do that program because we were able to meet such fascinating people. Oh, yes. It was, it was uh, the golden age for me, uh, you know, as far as uh, meeting these people and people I've uh, admired and uh, followed their careers, and to see them all in person was a great experience, no question about that. Well, it's been great talking to you again. We, of course, do talk every couple of weeks by telephone, although I don't think we've seen each other in uh, probably uh, 20 or 30 years. But we do manage to keep in touch, and that's the most important thing. Oh, yes, no question about that. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, when is the last time we did see face-to-face? Uh, -face? I, I think it was 1977. Oh, for goodness sake. You won't even recognize me anymore. <laughs> well, I'll have to put an ID on it when you see me. <laughs> <laughs> My hair has turned gray also. <laughs> Good talking to you, Ed. Yeah, Dick, uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, let's do it again real soon.